So since last time we talked, there was Ignite. And Ignite is this big grand uh, Microsoft conference where they tend to release new things and shiny things. And of course, they uh, also released a couple of new things uh, in Microsoft Fabric. And of course, I am most excited about the governance related features. So that's what I want to tell you about today. And one of those features are the new data catalog uh, tool inside of Microsoft Fabric. So let's take a look at that. As always, we are going to start directly inside of Microsoft Fabric. And if you look on the left side here, you see this one leg symbol. That is the one leg catalog that we have been looking at previously in some of my previous videos. But now if you open up uh, the one leg catalog, you're going to see that it has gotten a major makeover. So it's rebranded and cleaned up um, and changed quite a bit. So uh, let's take a look at what has changed. So if you go on the very top here, you can click at domains and then filter essentially all the content that you have inside of your Microsoft Fabric solution that you have access to uh, by domains, or you can filter by subdomains and help you understand, okay, what are the different fabric items that I got um, inside the domains? You can also filter by my items. So those will be the items that you're the owner of or uh, endorsed items. So that will be master data, uh, certified or promoted items. Or you can also filter by your favorite items. As you see here, I don't have any favorite items yet, but we'll fix that during this uh, demo. Now, if you go on top here, you also see this new thing. You can filter by data types. So this is a brand new thing. So you can filter by data. So that will be the fabric items that are storing your data. So it could be the lake house, or an event house, uh, or you can filter by all of those, or you can check out insights. So that's still great out for me, but that will be your dashboards and reports and so on. You can filter by processes like your data pipelines and so on, um, or you can filter by solutions if you want to dig into that or configurations. So that could be environments uh, and so on. Now, I think this is a really uh, cool way to do this filtering because from the uh, perspective of someone working inside Fabric. For instance, a data engineer, they might be really interested at looking at the processes or the data types, and maybe they want to filter on those and then look, in, look at that from their uh, domain, for instance, when they're working with their uh, Fabric solution. Or if you are a data scientist or report developer, you might want to use the insights filter. So it's going to help us also from the role perspective, where like what hat do you got on and what do you want to check out and focus on when you are discovering things or working with things from the one leg uh, catalog. Now you can also check out tags and filter by tags. I've already des uh, described what tags are. It's a brand new feature in one of my previous videos, but as you see here, tags doesn't really work for me. Um, probably because this is a preview feature, uh, but I'm going to show you how you can still view tags uh, on your items later on. Now you can also filter by uh, workspaces. So if I, for instance, filter by my Airbnb Oslo workspace, and then I open up this semantic model, you see this really cool thing. So now I can look at a lot of the metadata and get some insights on the semantic model directly from the catalog. So I can look at uh, the tables and the columns, the owner, sensitivity label, and I can also check out the lineage. So if I open up this one here, you see that I can now check out all the downstream and upstream items related to my semantic model. And um, so all the related items essentially, um, and that's the list view. But if you click on the lineage view uh, over here, you can also check out uh, the actual visual representation of how the lineage is going and how my assets are connected to one another. So based on what item you open up, you're going to show different things. So if I open up the SQL Analytics endpoint, for instance, you see that part of my view here is also going to um, include the SQL connection string, or something that I can check out. If I open up my lake house, you also see here actually that I have tagged this lake house as project A. So that's also visible to me to check out. And I can again check out the different tables that I have inside my lake house uh, and so on. Now, you also can directly from the items page manage permissions or change the settings of your item. So that could be that you want to directly change sensitivity labels or endorsements or tags, or just get access to the SQL Analytics endpoint. 
Um, and also here again, you can check out the lineage view. Um, so if we here go into the visual representation, I just want to show you that the lineage can be more than just a simple lineage, of course. It depends on what you built and how things are connected. Um, I'm doing this on a tiny screen, so as you can see, it's a bit small, but that's also going to change depending on what screen you're using, but I can zoom out um, and scroll as well. And there's also this monitoring tab here that we haven't seen before. Now, I don't have any activities to show on this lake house, but if I go into processes and just check out my data pipelines, I just want to show you what this can look like um, for a pipeline that has been running a little bit. So I'm going to open up um, my uh, YouTube pipeline. And here you see on the monitoring tab that I have a bunch of um, uh, runs and activities. So some of them have failed, some of them succeeded. Um, and this is a way for me to dig into what's been happening and going on with my activity. I can also schedule directly from this page, uh, the pipeline, um, or check out recent runs, dig into the details, and also open up directly from here the monitoring page. Also, if I want to, I can check out the lineage in the workspace and go directly there, open up the items itself, and uh, also set this as my favorite item. I can export it or save as something new, so I can essentially copy my item um, and build from there. Now, if you go to favorites now, we see that now this pipeline is not my favorite item. Uh, and I finally have a favorite <laughs> asset inside of Fabric that I now can filter on. Now, there's a bunch of um, things, obviously, that you can dig into. And I think this is a great place to better understand what items you have just from a discoverability perspective. Because one thing uh, you can also do is that, for instance, you have your Power BI reports. If you're tagging those Power BI reports, as um, discoverable, that means that people that go into the Walnut catalog can discover them, even though they don't have access to them. So they will be discoverable through the Walnut catalog, and then they can uh, essentially then uh, ask for access to the actual report. So for the report developer or data consumer, this is a great tool to uh, discover and understand what exists. And also for the developer and technical people to make that data discoverable and available to the users in your organization. I also think from the developer's perspective, like from a data engineer point of view or report developer point of view, you would probably um, use the one like catalog more and more in the future as your go-to place for working with the items. Because up until this point, uh, I see that developers were using the workspace overview a lot. So we go into one workspace and then we work from there. Of course, we're still going to do that, but maybe uh, this tool, this one like catalog, is going to help us to um, get an easier surface to work from because now I can filter on maybe project A and this domain and so on, so, so on. And then I can see the entire picture of all the items that is relevant for me. Maybe I'm an engineer, so I only want to check out the uh, pipelines or notebooks and so on. Maybe I don't want to filter out reports. Um, and so on. So it's going to help us to get um, a better overview. And I think it's going to be valuable from the developer point of view as well. Now, obviously, I think this is cool, but I want to know what you think. What do we think about this makeover? Is this something we are going to use? Are we happy about this? Let me know what you think in the comments below or somewhere around this video. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.